Hey everybody, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. If anybody knows the follow command, by the way, on units, because I remember seeing that it was like control F or F or whatever, that isn't doing it on my computer. Maybe it has to be like certain. Let me know. Give me your observer hotkey tips. Someone paid Sham2. First of all, I want to give shout outs. First of all, to Mr. ES, big shout out. Huge shout out to Zeke the Zealot, who gave me a spare Windows 10 key. That is going to allow me to get up and live streaming and doing nightly roam ish things. In the near future, I want to do stuff like that. If I'm relaxing, I want to relax and chat with people, primarily, and build a little bit of that again, and maybe interact and have some fun. I do have like Twitch partnership that's kind of been grandfathered in, so I figured you know I might as well. Also, big shout out to Zachary Leslie. Thank you for being a new donor. So, Mr. Es and Zachary Leslie, new Patreon donors, and I'm going to give another shout out to Navi. Cheer up, Navi. Feel good about life. Yes. Anyway, this is Machine versus I'm Jiraiya. I'm just going to call Jiraiya Jiraiya. I'm just going to call Jiraiya Jiraiya. Already ahead of myself. Both of them have their BSL tags up. This is going to be Zerg versus Zerg. Both players opening with some sort of Overlord first build. By the way, wanted to make sure I caught that. Overlords are heading to the upper left-hand corner collectively. I might miss things. This is the day it looks like we're seeing an overpool from Machine upper right-hand corner. Jiraiya... Uh, probably going to go for a 12 pool, something along those lines. He's gone up to 11 supply. We'll see. Although it's been a little bit more customary to go off 11 these days. I'm not sure the full scope of all of the indications of that. Uh, but 11 pool, things like that. We'll see if we see the full 12. Looks like we are seeing a skip of drones. So we're probably going to see 11 hatch. Or, no, we're going to see in in-base. In-base 11 hatch, which is actually unusual considering... So this is more a defensive in-base build. And something similar, I'm going to throw this out there. From a 2v2, from the 2v2 players on Team Light, I stole this build that still worked in StarCraft 2 in the beta for a tournament, and that took me all the way to the finals against some other SC2GG guys. With and he's going to build the spawning pool. This is going to allow Jiraiya to have more larva. And here's a critical thing: in ZVZ, there's certain things that give you advantages: more gas for more mutalisks. Having mutalisks in the first place that'll win you games. Having more larva. Having more drones. All these are advantages that you can use to try to win that match. But with this, basically Jiraiya is going to have the positional advantage as machines coming into him to try to attack. And machine needs to because he opened up with the more aggressive build. Looks like you got the initial zerglings floating out. The Probably would have had them all at once. Larva kind of spawn. I think there's a little bit of variance in larva spawn. But those six zerglings making their way right across. We should see, yeah, there's zergling speed being built. How do I bring that up? Sitting the F keys to try to get the follow so I can get the production tab up. I'm going to leave this up. Usually I would leave, this is kind of one of those like, yeah, commentator would everything. I should leave it off for the purity of the game. But because I can't catch everything, and I apologize if I don't catch everything in this match. I heard it was a crazy one. Um, I am, yeah, I apologize. I'm going to leave this up for my own sake, basically. But I want to be a good enough commentator in the future where I can leave that off. No additional gas for Jiraiya. So he is going to switch into more a overall aggressive Zergling build. And you can see the timing of this as Machine moves in. He's being met by more Zerglings than he can handle at a positional advantage. And unfortunately, Machine still may need to get something done here. Because this is going to put... It should put him back overall. Although he's going for a protected... He's going for that inside protected hatchery. Jiraiya in position to take it. And that's going to put Jiraiya at an overall production advantage. And we'll see what happens from there. Machine moving up to Lair... Jiraiya is still not mining gas. So Jiraiya is either going to have to do one of two things. He's either going to have to just go pure Zergling like we saw from Erbmon in the previous cast. Check that one out. It was really fun to cast. Or he's going to have to... Oh, front door attack there from Machine trying to push through. He is going to be able to make it through. And he's going to be able to see the lack of gas right here. And this is huge. Going to be able to even up the drone count as well. Jiraiya was, I think, up two drones right there. I missed a look at it. He's currently sitting at 11 drones still. And he needs to be very, very careful. Ooh, never mind. Even drone count now. Plus machine has the gas advantage. That's going to be huge. And Jiraiya needs to produce additional Zerglings rather than building drones he might want to and try to get a defense at a difficult positional uh, thing. Because again, concavity matters in Zergling versus Zergling battles. And right now he's going to try to pick away that spawning pool, which is going to force Jiraiya to come at him. Machine pulling out. And I actually feel like he might have been able to get a little bit more done here. But this is actually, I think, a wise build out. He got the advantage. He knows he has the advantage now. He's going to go ahead and back off. Lair is finished, but what Machine needs to find is a period of time where he has enough gas. It looks like he actually pulled more drones off gas to be able to produce the Zerglings he's going to need to defend against Jiraiya's counterattack with Zerglings. And I think he, I think we can, I'm not sure if it's on the minimap or not. If he, we'll have to see in a moment if he did build a defensive building in here. I can't tell. Okay, no defensive building in there. Otherwise, we would have seen a little thwap. 
Uh, but concave advantage for Machine right there. He has a positional advantage, but he, as far as where, the, when the, marine, the Zerglings are being built, but keep in mind they're coming from a distance and wins that fight. I was not expecting that. I was expecting Jiraiya actually to pull that out, but now Jiraiya having to back off, and that was, I was expecting maybe a split in Zerglings, some movement. It looks like Overlords are finally catching each other's base. By the way, I should have mentioned, uh, I didn't get to say that in the cast, because both Overlords were coming up here and they were able to see each other, that's how Machine knew Jiraiya's position initially. Spire being built, now Jiraiya's in some trouble, because he is nowhere near Lair, he's nowhere near Gas, which means he needs an Evolution Chamber and to plop down a couple Spore Colonies. And that is drones that he is not going to want to spend on. It's basically the, I think, what was it? There's like the World War II quote from Patton. Static defenses are monument to the stupidity of man. Something along those lines. And that's not always the case in Brood War. But it is the case in this instance. Uh, well, it's not the case in this instance. You guys get what I'm saying. This is a little bit of a commentator brain. And also, the, this is the day after Daylight Savings. And still working through the, the sleep issues there around thereabouts. But anyway, Overlord is going to have that information before that spore colony comes up. And he's going to be able to see that gas is now being harvested. And I think he's got to assume this Overlord is going to have to sneak in to confirm it, that the layer is going to be built here uh, in the meantime. And no second gas for a machine. Uh, instead, having to produce a lot of Zerglings. And I wish I could see in there to see it. Um... Creep colonies. I'm trying to figure out who's... Wait a minute. Upgrade missile attack. Upgrade missile attack! So we're from Jiraiya. So this top one is Jiraiya. This bottom one is Machine. And it looks like, okay, we do have a creep colony in here now. You can see it on the mini-map. Uh, so that's going to provide some additional defense. But what this indicates, and I love this. He still hasn't placed the Hydral Den in. He's allowing these spore, these spore colonies to go up. Uh, I do want to note here, before I talk about that, though, there's a lot of Zerglings flooding across the field. Jiraiya is maybe not in position to deal with it on his front door, so there, this might be another opportunity for Machine. If these Zerglings flood through and are able to get on top of those spore colonies, that could be devastating with the Mutalisks on the way. Drones pulling out to provide additional defense, but it looks like Superior Concavity and some additional Zerglings being built. And I like that Machine, again, backing off because he doesn't have to press the advantage here. He can come back with Mutalisks, maybe dive in if he wants to uh, from there. But here's the critical thing. This right here, and look, yeah, the Overlord going to get pressed back. No layer there. I think Machine's got to know something's up. Because he's got to see here that there's no layer as well. So he's got to have an indication at this stage. It is very difficult, and there's the Hydralis Den being built in this sneaky little corner. It is a, in this one little pocket. I wish I could show this better. This one Overlord. Uh, I wonder how to get rid of that, actually. Again, commentator tips. Let me know, people. Um, this is going to be able to sneak around and maybe get a view of that, but it's going to be challenging. Machine has to know something's up. Mutalisks versus Hydralisks is a, is a tough matchup. Because Mutalisks are, even though Hydralisks in just a standing fight can do very, very well against Mutalisks, particularly when you get those higher tier tech units, specifically Defiler tends to be the turning point. If you can get to Defiler and you can get a swarm down and start moving across the map and playing defensively in that regard, if there isn't too large a Mutalisk count, sometimes you can end up swinging the advantage. It looks like Machine going to use these Mutalisks to try to pick away these Zerglings. Jiraiya, I may have missed it, but these Mutalisks may have already moved around and killed a couple Overlords on the map. Jiraiya has to move very carefully and do a lot of micromanagement around this. Carapace, by the way, being upgraded uh, for Machine. Because he's going to lack a lot of vision on what Machine's doing in the meantime. And whether Machine is being more offensive and going for a kill um, or being more macro-oriented, looks like, which it looks like he is, he's going to go ahead and try to take that 12 o'clock base. <laughs> and this sort of information is critical for Dryah. Whether he can get those Zerglings out uh, and push things, it looks like these Mulists are going to clean out these Overlords. And here's the thing, Jiraiya can't uh, looks like he killed a few Zerglings that were wandering out in the field. Jiraiya needs to save these Zerglings and do the maximum amount he can to make this work. The other problem with going Hydralisk in the bottom, and I feel like I'm just all over the place with this cast here, trying to catch all the action and talk about the implications of Hydralisk. Part of the problem with Hydralisk is, is you need two upgrades to really make them effective. You need that speed upgrade, you need that range upgrade. Carapace now being upgraded, by the way. Weapons 1 has finished. But even with all of those upgrades, Mulisks can fly! They can go over all of the hill and all of the terrain, which means if Hydralisks are out here trying to deal with stuff, it's going to take them a long time to get back here and try to, to play the defensive posture where Hydralisks um, can easily, it looks like this Overlord trying to sneak in and get a view, still hasn't seen the lair, so I think he's got to know at this stage. 
uh, looks like some Zerglings trying to sneak back across the field machine, clearing out any additional Zerglings, trying to hunt them down and deny as much information as possible. And also putting out, I like what Machine's doing. He's patrolling, I think, and moving out a couple, it looks like three Zergling, uh, three kills right here, making sure there's no additional bases being snuck by Jiraiya out in the field. Hydralisks now being produced. But the, yeah, once you have a sheer raw advantage of Mutalisks like this, you can almost think of it like... Uh, TVZ, where the Hydralisks are the the Marines, except without any medics to heal them, and they can just get picked off one at a time, particularly with open field. The one thing about Ringing Bloom, though, is this is a gigantic open map. There is not a lot of terrain features to interrupt army movement in the middle of the map. So it is possible... Unknown caller in the meantime on my phone. Apologies for that. Uh, it is possible, and this is how you know the cast is authentic, uh, with the phone call in the background. Um, it is possible to... <laughs> authenticity! Uh, it is possible <laughs> to uh, to win these sort of matches. It does happen, but it is very difficult. Machine almost to a full control... I think that's a full control group of new lists, and they continue to pour out level 1 weapons on its way now that level 1 Carapace is finished. He's mining out of that 12 o'clock base, which is going to give him an overall production advantage. Drya has the overall drone count advantage, but again, it's not 1 to 1. Like it is... And we have a Queen's Nest and Ensnare! Perfect timing with the... Wow, I got lucky there. The camera was just in position. This is kind of an awkward spot again. So he's going to go for Ensnare to deal with these Mutalisks. And I have to say, in all my time casting, all the ZVZs I believe I've casted and watched, I don't think in any ZVZ I have seen Queens and Ensnare be utilized in this matchup. And I like this idea. I don't know if it'll play out, but I like the idea from Jiraiya. Because Ensnare lowers the rate of fire of Mutalisks, and it makes it so they are much, much slower. So if he can get the, the initial Hydralisks in position, dump it and snare on the Mutalisks, they're going to sit there and get pummeled by that Hydralisk fire, and that could be the difference in this match. Usually what you'll see is players go right for Defiler and Plague. This is kind of a, an interesting stopgap measure, I almost feel, to make these Hydralisks more effective, and that might allow Jiraiya to sneak out and get an additional base Looks like Machine moving in now to try to find what he can pick off. He might be able to get additional drones. Looks like he is able to get additional drones here and maybe an Overlord. He's... Oh, there's the Ensnare! Mutalists aren't quite in position, but they are going to be able to do significant amounts of damage, plus the Spore, and Machine's got to be going like, ah, oh, holy crap. And he's going to have to back off. Here's the thing, though. That was... Wow, the Queen's almost dead, plus it's out of energy... But I think that might have been worth it. Yeah, you can see Jiraiya going like, I've done enough damage. I know these Hydralisks will be able to win a, hand, a straight up fight. And maybe able to swing back around uh, and be in a defensive posture to deal with the, uh, a attack from the back end. So he's going to sneak out, go ahead and take an additional base to try to match Machine's additional base. But Machine, I, I got to think that he's got to be thinking, okay, wow, this is so many Mutalisks. Somewhere out there, there's an old SE2GG thread that had the descriptors for the groups of things, like a murder of crows, uh, whatever it is of geese. This is a whole lot of mutalisks. So it's multiple of whatever a group of mutalisks are. That is a huge army of mutalisks. But, but, Hive is up. Defiler Mound is being built. So even though Machine does have the supply count, he does have the movement count, he does have the, I think, the gas advantage. He is going to continue to hold that gas advantage because this is a mineral only base. Keep in mind it's Hydralisks being produced and not Mutalisks. And Hydralisks are cheaper units. But it is possible with a good plague on this, I'm going to call it flock for now, even though it's not flock. I know it's not flock. On this flock of cavalcade, I don't know. I'll call it cavalcade because that's just a more, it's a more entertaining word to say. Just say it. Cavalcade. Cavalcade. It's fun to say. Uh, <laughs> These, these Mutalists get plagued once when they're in, in the full bunch, and that might be game over for Machine. <clears throat> and I believe this Queen has enough energy left over to make an... So basically, in Star Plus Plague, that would be like the ultimate, but this is a lot of Hydralisks in the background too. Creep Colonies being established. How is Machine going to respond? Because actually, I feel like if he just lets things sit, Jiraiya is starting to put together the components, and keep in mind... He, he already has the upgrade advantage underneath. I like this game theory stuff going on. He's got Carapace 2, or 1, Carapace 2 on the way, Needles 1, um, 
which eventually is going to move towards two. And actually, am I looking at the wrong tab? This might be, I think the top one might be dry out. It's hard to tell. Another ensnare, but the Mulus, the, sorry, the Hydro Scatter position, plus they got to go across this ramp to try to engage. Sorry, I missed the initial encounter, but it looks like Machine is going to be able to wipe out this hatchery, which is huge. That is a huge swing in fortunes. And I got to say where I was thinking Jiraiya might be able to take this out. And plus some additional overlords going to be able to get picked off. And that is going to wipe out. Ooh. So now bigger disadvantages for Jiraiya to overcome. Before I thought there was like a window. And now I'm like, I don't know. Machine might have just capped it there. And might be able to ride this into straight victory. He's going to have to rebuild this. Might just want to camp the Hydrosks there. Some lurkers being built. And actually I don't... I, it's too bad he doesn't have perfect vision here. Because he does not need... <laughs> lurkers against this um and i like what machine's doing all he has to all machine really has to do now and also has some scourge to deal with any sort of latent queens that are out there um plague so to oh sorry so top so this is flyer carapace here top tab is dry i need to remember that top is dry bottom is machine uh level two carapace is in in play here's the thing though with dry not being in a position where you can be aggressive and where he's going to have to rely on these Dark Swarm. We'll see if my wife makes any noise in the background as she's coming back from shopping. Love my wife. Another dive in from Mutalisks. Hi, honey. She's in cast now. Uh, Mutalisks is going to try to dive in and continue to press uh, press pressure. Here's the thing, though. As long as these Mutalisks are attacking the front, these he's going to need Defilers at all fronts plopping down these Dark Swarms. And that is just a slow war of attrition where he gets free units from Consume, essentially. Uh, and Jiraiya is already behind in supply count, wants to spend every mineral he can in way of trying to sneak back into this to get a superior economic advantage. This patrol zergling, I'm wondering if it killed any drones out in the field that I missed in the interim. Maybe people can let me know or let me know in comments if that was missed. We do have this single, and I think this might have been a single drone kill up here in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, we'll see if Machine clears that out and tries to move towards that economic basis. But if Jiraiya can hold on and completely turn this around and ooh, an overlord getting killed that was an expensive unit to consume i'm wondering if that was a misclick if he can turn this around there's the zergling he can actually sit on his base army advantage as far as upgrades because carapace works across the board with all those units where it's just mutalisk uh carapace upgrades in the background and i think machine might realize this he's trying to get an evolution chamber and some of his upgrades he's moving to hive tech as well so we'll see what he can do with that. He might want to get, I don't know, Hydralisks, Plague, some other stuff for himself. Because Plague is amazing ZVZ when you can have it out there. A lot of Lurkers being built, but again, Lurkers aren't needed when you have this just immense amount. That is most of machine supply in Mutalisks. Diving in over this area, no Queen in position, but it looks like he doesn't want that fight because of all those Hydralisks sitting there. There's still this, and this is the problem for Dry as well, is, is there's still this soft underbelly. He's trying to take the six right now. This isn't enough units really, in my opinion, to defend against all of this. So he really can't go and be aggressive in the way I think he would want to be at this stage to try to turn this around and turn it into an economic advantage. I do feel like Machine is losing a bit of opportunity to go ahead. He has map control with all of these units, so he could go ahead and expand if he wants to. And I don't think there's a lot that Jiraiya could do about it. And we'll see if he starts doing that now. Okay, he does have a drone now moving out as I say that, which makes me feel good about myself. Um, it's always, but he's going up to Greater Spire. I like this play from Machine, actually. So he's going to go up to Greater Spire, going to use Guardians. And with this Cliffside Edge, he can do a lot of damage. With this Cliffside Edge, he can do a lot of damage. And with this Cliffside Edge, he can do a lot of damage with Guardians over that gap. Um, which is going to force Jiraiya to go more of an air base play and move against his advantage. It looks like there was a something creepy. Um, maybe a Nidus Canal uh, being built right there. Does he have... Hi he does have Hive. And there is the initial Nidus being built here. Keep in mind, this is the other thing Jiraiya and Machine are going to have to worry about. And I think this... I'm curious if this Nidus Canal is going to be linked here. Or if we're going to see uh, an offensive Nidus. I'm not sure. That's the other thing both players are going to have to worry about in this area of Hive Tech. We could see offensive Niduses in this game. So a couple of Guardians being built over this uh, corner edge to go ahead and attack this inside natural expansion. Some Hydralisks moving up to the inside nine to try to establish that base. Currently, I want to get a, before these guys pop, I want to get a good base count. So we got four mining bases um, here. Overlord's getting a spot right there versus just, it looks like three mining bases, but fourth coming online, four machine. But Dry will take the overall pseudo, it's not pure one-to-one -one economics here. 
And it looks like those Guardians are going to be able to sit over the... Plus another attack at the 6, but Swarm is going to push that back. And I think Machine can do this. Yeah, he's doing the same thing there that he's doing in the other position. But again, Jiraiya having to be multiple places at once. But as long as Machine's not microwing these Guardians, these Guardians in a little bit of trouble against these Hydralisks underneath, particularly if they're focusing on the buildings and not the Hydralisks. Um, and I'm wondering if we're going to see a Plague or even... Do we have a Spire yet? Do we have a Spire? Uh, okay, defensive, defensive Swarms to get all that back in position. I'm wondering if we're going to see a defensive swarm someplace. Or do we have a spire being built any place yet? Because this is where a couple mutalisks or things like that would be advantageous. Or even scourge to, to deal with that. 9 o'clock base going up. I'm still curious about if we're going to see... I think Machine's in a better position to do it because, again, he does have overall map control. There's the attacks coming in um, from the overall edge. So abusive. So abusive. And again, Jiraiya having a lot of trouble dealing with this needs something to deal with these guardians um, at all ends and it looks like the guardians moving in here they're not getting a lot done here but they are able to stop that gas critically zerg even when you're just going for flat units otherwise lives and dies by the gas intake and currently i think he's just sitting at essentially one gas and i don't think he's got all three drones on this from initial look maybe he does no i think that's still just two drones right there and he's able to clear out this mineral only expansion so machine actually really hurting with this Guardian Harass, absolutely devastating Jiraiya's ability to get his economy up and running and roll back into this match. And he is taking some additional, and also looks like, okay, so that is a Nidus right there. He's starting to get his additional bases established. Mulesk Flock going to move out, try to dive into this location. Is Jiraiya going to have, is he going to lose that? Oh, there was an opportunity missed to pick off that Defiler and maybe completely decimate, but it looks like he's too worried about the Plague. He doesn't want to lose these Mulesk to the Plague, so he's going to turn around. But he, I think he missed a shot to kill that Defiler and wipe out that 9 o'clock. But not better safe than sorry. I will say that has been a problem with Machine's play in the past. Where um, oftentimes he's been overly cautious or overly mechanical, hence the name Machine. Uh, and end up missing opportunities in certain matches. And a lot of people have given that criticism in the past. Uh, I don't think that's the case here. I think these safe decisions have been wise, I will say. So yeah, maybe you missed a Defiler. But you didn't lose the bulk advantage of the army you had. And he's still ahead overall because he's been able to deny this gas, because he has map control, because he has everything else. And I'm trying to keep an eye um, for vision because he does have vision of creep. It looks like some additional base. Okay, so you, he's filling this out. He's got the inside base being capped. He's gathering some units in this upper left-hand corner. I'm not sure for what purpose, but I'm waiting to see if we're going to see a, an offensive Nidus from Machine here. Because yes, he can't get a lot done. He's still latently forcing some Zerglings and things to be consumed uh, with these swarms. And that's really got to be pressuring on Jiraiya. But what I really, really, really want to see again is a Nidus Canal from either player sneaking in. That would be one way that Jiraiya would be able to sneak back and take... And I'll try to... I'll be a little bit more distracted in my other commentary because I'm going to try to keep a close eye to see if I can catch that should it happen, if it happens. Um, I'm really hoping for it. Machine going to go ahead and try to engage over that 9 o'clock uh, using, I think, the, yeah, Defiler of his own and his own Dark Swarm. I didn't think Jiraiya would uh, do that position, but this is actually decently defended. Keep in mind, yeah, Machine moving up. I think he's got, yeah, there's Plague uh, to take out some of those defensive buildings. Also, I think Plague, when it lands on uh, Lurkers, does reveal detection there. Not that it's as necessary. Finally, Mutalisk is out for Jiraiya to clean up these overlords at, yeah, all over the place. And that is going to make it a little bit harder for Machine to sneak a, an offensive Nidus if that was his plan. It looks like a couple units sneaking through, getting cleaned up at the 9 o'clock base. So a lot of Machine's attacks getting repelled at this stage. And it looks like Jiraiya going to continue to swing up, but um, that's the rest of that Mutalisk flock. I missed a plague, it looks like, across some of these Mutalisks, but it didn't catch the bulk of them, which is critical. And it looks like there's still additional harassment happening across. It looks like Jiraiya is just trying to clean up where he can. These mules are getting cleaned up. This would be a critical swing as if all of these mutalisks got plagued again. So Machine still has to be careful. Um, 9 o'clock base and threat from Jiraiya. Still, uh, this will get cleaned up shortly. Machine, ha I still think, has the overall production advantage. Get a count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 bases. And the main is getting a little bit thrown versus 1. Mineral only two, three, four. Yeah, so five versus four overall. Jiraiya trying to press out, maybe push this nine o'clock base, but that's a lot of lurkers. And again, actually what Machine can do here is he can just play a little bit more of this harassy pick and 
roll sort of thing. Do what he can, back off. Can lose these guardians here though. Um, do a little bit of damage where he can, and just take, just hold map control and mine out the rest of the map and win over on. There it is! I caught it! I caught it! The offensive Nidus Canal. Is Jiraiya going to catch it? It looks like not. He's moving his units across the map. He's moving actually to the bottom right. And I'm not sure where the initial Nidus was placed. It looks like it's here. So this is where we're going to see the flood. And this is going to go across the mineral only. And this is going to be a... Wow, Jiraiya is completely out of position to deal with this. And he's lo losing some units for free. He's moving towards the front as well. Machine needs to be a little bit careful. Popping through instantly. There are a couple lurkers and no detection here. Actually, a drone going through as well. He needs detection to deal with the lurkers, but he has lurkers of his own. That's going to wipe out the inside three, plus this is a foothold to instantly get units across the map and attacking Jiraiya's front. Jiraiya, uh, is he going to pull? I think this might be a miss rally. They're moving across the base, or maybe this is intentional. He's just going to try to go where he can. Gonna con Wow, continuous harassment happening here. He's going to try to dive into Machine's main. There is a sunken colony there, but that's Dark Swarm, and that means those Zerglings are going to be able to pound away with that without any uh, concern. Machine getting some Zerglings of his own to clean that up. He needs Lurkers there to deal with it. So attacks happening everywhere. And a counterattack tried to happen at the 12 o'clock. But it looks like that wasn't able to get through. Jiraiya still kicking and fighting. Despite the severe economic damage in all fronts. Machine has a larger bank. But this game is not over yet. So watch for it. Machine able to sneak into the 9 o'clock. It looks like I missed that. So attacks happening absolutely everywhere. I can't even catch them all. And this is where it would be nice to one day dedicated observer for these replays we'll figure it out um looks like this guardian ooh, is going to get cleaned up but this is still a critical nidus canal it's got to be wow jiraiya trying to do what he can he is losing an ants he did get a plague on some of these mutalisks that were grouped some more plague on some of these mutalisks i don't think it matters at this stage though the one thing jiraiya does have going for him though is he has got that level three carapace versus level two level two on the opposite side so he does have the upgrade advantage and I feel like he does have enough, uh, and it looks like some Zerglings flooding into the 6 o'clock and be able to do some damage there as well. Still some more Overlords trying to keep that gas down. That is going to happen. I'm not sure if that's worth losing 3 Guardians for little cost otherwise, though. Jiraiya's drone count, though, is plummeting with all of these attacks happening at all of these areas. Machine continuing to put on the pressure. He's closing this game out at this stage. And I'm not sure that there's a lot Jiraiya can do except for try to wind the storm, as it were. Of machines onslaught. Wow, ultralisks out in the field now. It doesn't, and it looks like they do have that that plus carapace upgrade, and that is not what you want to see if you do not have ultralisks of your own or even lurkers or something to deal with this machine now flooding into the main. There are no defenses here except for a a very measly, a very paltry force from Jiraiya to try to defend this, and I think. This might be it. Bottom left and corner now going to get cleaned up. There are a couple, looks like, mutalisks. Maybe a plague. A little bit of a latent plague right there. Latent? That's not the word I wanted there. A little bit of a plague, but I think it might be not enough. And actually, I take that back. This uh, army getting cleaned up. The mutalisks is not going to be able to do anything, but... Uh, and the machine's still going to be able to hold that front. He's going to be able to also clean up this desperation. It looks like a desperation hidden hatch in the bottom right in corner. I'm wondering if there, it looks like there's kind of a measly counterattack, but there's so many lurkers out in the field that Machine has as far as just contain units that I don't think they're going to get very far or be able to do very much. And even if they could, Machine just has some of these expedition units that he had out earlier to clean up a lot of these attacks. Jiraiya flailing at this point. Looks like he was able to clean up that attack on his main, but his drone count is so far behind. His main is mined out. His natural expansion is mined out. He hasn't been able to cap that gas in a long period of time. Six o'clock is his only mining base. Trying desperately to try to sneak and hold this bottom right-hand corner. He's throwing units out desperately to try to find some sort of leg room in this match to try to sneak back into it, but Machine is really starting to just do the constrictor death grip here in this match. Still uh, looks like Mutalists and no anti-air. That should be taken care of momentarily. We'll see if Machine actually even wants to bother with this or if he just wants to flood with a pure counterattack. Because honestly, if he just counterattacks at this stage, I think that would be game. Um, and it looks like he is going for the counterattack. Mutalists getting... Uh, yeah, I think the Mutalists got cleaned up by some Hybalists that are out in the field. Machine moving down with his Zerglings that I assume... Neither of them look like they have that... Uh, I'm just kind of going by vision here. I don't think either of them have that Crackling upgrade with the, the speed the speed attack upgrade, I don't think. 
It's hard to tell though because they die so quickly to these lurkers and things like that. Some units getting killed out in the field. Machine, I still feel, has the advantage. Still trying to clean it up. He has twice the supply, but Jiraiya putting on a valiant defense, a, def a valiant defense effort. All of the, wow, all of the drones moving to the bottom right and corner in the midst. These are heroic drones right here, people. I feel for these drones, I have some sort of mental attachment to these drones now. Where it's like, you know you're just going on this suicide mission to try to get... It's like a Dunkirk sort of thing, where you're just going to try to get the units so you can just keep fighting, but at the same time, you're going through enemy fire. Single Lurker, desperately, with 11 kills. Hero Lurker right here. This is the desperate last-ditch effort from Jiraiya to try to sneak something out in this match. Machine doesn't even need detection with these Ultralifts down here. He can just pound through and probably take out this hatchery regardless and when he does take this hatchery out that will be game um, Jiraiya will not be able to recover overlords have made their way down here so that is it little zerglings trying to pound against their larger counterpart counterpart brothers in war and another attack being flooded down uh, a couple lurkers to try to deal with this as well as some mutalisks so nice defense from Jiraiya right there but that bottom right base has been taken out and I think that was the last stand for Jiraiya it was inevitable prior to this, but losing all of those drones and losing the potential of that bottom right-hand base, I think that is all she wrote. I gotta give it to Jiraiya, though. This was a crazy match with a lot of awesome stuff from both players back and forth. Multiple times, I actually thought Jiraiya was going to be able to swing the advantage, but Machine doing critical things to close this out. And unfortunately, one day, I think we are going to see, and I think it's going to be in the near future, <clears throat> where we see a meta... Where you can, there's the GG. We're gonna see a meta where you swing, you see the swing back um, of the ground carapace units and a way to make that work. And it'll be a fun thing when that happens. And I think this might be a little bit of a prototype of that around the corner. But in the meantime, a fun and rare ZVZ from Machine and Jiraiya. Special thanks to those guys. Check out their streams. They stream on Twitch, even though it's rare. They're they've caught Jiraiya less than I've caught Machine. I actually should do a video where I just talk about all the various streamers out there. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Again, thanks to all of the uh, patrons, specifically Zachary Leslie, Mr. Yes, I see you. Um, Zeke, special thanks to you. Special thanks to Jay Snake, who's making me music. To Bivort, who's also making me art. Navi, and I feel like I'm missing someone on the Patreon uh, overall checklist. I know I'm missing someone. Who is it? I can't go out of the commentary to check, but uh, this is my problem for trying to do it from memory. Anyway, thanks to all patrons. Uh, check out, keep an eye on Twitch, because I would like to game there and hang out with you guys in the future and do fun, interactive stuff. But in the meantime, thank you for listening. I hope everybody has a great, uh, great day. I wish you all the best.